Hey everyone, this is Andrew, the 3D Printing Engineer, and in this video I wanted to show you some little knickknacks I've been printing. Um, I haven't done that many vlog style videos um, at all in starting this channel, um, so I wanted to just, you know, give you updates on little parts that aren't necessarily worth um, making time lapses out of, or maybe things that I have currently working in progress, or little extra things I want to talk about. Um, so, about a ton of filament. <laughs> um, I think I have 20 or so spools of filament, um, a 25 if you count the $5 0.2 kilogram spools, um, but I probably have about 20 kilograms worth of uh, filament sitting over here in my printer. Um, so first thing I'm going to show you is I got the new Protopasta HTPLA version 3, I believe it is, 3.0, whatever they call it. Um, it was pretty cheap. It was it was like their cheapest filament I've ever seen. It was I think thirty or forty dollars for a full kilogram. Usually for protopasta, that's what you spend per half kilogram. Um, because their stuff is really good. Maybe it's because this this isn't colored at all. Um, it's like clear, and then when you print it thick, it turns into this kind of um, white finish. But this part, which um, I did film a time lapse of, I just haven't edited and uploaded it yet. Um, this is a kind of labyrinth box. So the idea is there's this little, uh, I hope you can see that well, there's this little pin inside and that's going to ride along these little grooves. So this is essentially a kind of like a three-dimensional maze. I mean, in reality it's two-dimensional um, because you can move um, you can move radially, or sorry, you can move like in the theta direction and then you can move uh, down the, the z direction. Um, yeah, you're not moving. Regularly. So it's, it's a two-dimensional maze just wrapped around a three-dimensional object, but it's pretty neat. So I'll try to put it together. Um, it's just as hard to put together as it is to take apart. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Alright, cool. So that's what it is when you put it together. Um, this nice little box. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty strong. I printed it with uh, three shells thick. Um, and I think 25% infill, so this thing is rock solid. Um, the cool thing about their HTPLA is that you can heat treat it. I haven't tried it yet, but I plan on it. Basically, put it in the oven for a certain amount of minutes, depending on the volume of the material. Um, that it's something around 100 C, I think. Um, the part will shrink a little bit by, I think, 1 to 2%. But if you do that with a normal PLA, it'll shrink by a lot more. It won't be controlled. So this stuff's designed to shrink only to a certain point. The idea is that when you heat treat it, um, it gives it better thermal properties after. So you don't, normally if you get PLA and you put it in, I don't know, I forget the temperature, but like 70 C or something, it's going to get all soft and it's going to get warped and it's going to get messed up. This stuff won't have that issue until 140 C after you heat treat it. Um, so it's pretty great and it's, it's really strong. Um, to me, it's pretty hard to take it apart. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, so it's not that bad. I mean, it, you can take it off in a few minutes. Um, people in line are sort of just taking their kids a few hours to figure it out, um, which I don't know if I believe or not, but either way, it makes a cool little desk toy. And it's really like, I can't, if I squeeze that as hard as I can, I can't get it to deflect at all. Um, and I did print it three shells thick. Um, I saw online people were saying that instead of increasing infill, try increasing the shell count if you want a more durable part. And so far, that's, that's definitely been true. Um, I've noticed that it, the parts really get stronger. It makes sense because instead of just putting this stuff in the middle, um, you're printing a continuous layer on the outside, which you know uh, kind of meshes together better and will get back to the train. Um, so right now I'm prepping a part um, so I can show you it. Um, I printed these these badges for work. So the idea is that. Um, Depending on what company you work at as an engineer or whatever, you know, a business person, you know, accountant, I don't know, um, you'll, you get, you know, badges. So you need to badge into the building. Um, and depending on your, you know, how big your company is, you might have these, these kind of um, uh, RSA keys or whatever keys. You know, there's different companies that make these. Um, and you're always carrying these around in a badge or on your belt or whatever, and they kind of clink together <laughs> as you're walking. Um, and so someone online made a model for a holder that holds uh, a... 
key card and an RSA key all in one kind of little assembly. Um, so I printed this in Protopasta Silver Smoke um, Iridescent Ice PLA, I think this one's called. Um, and this stuff is magic. Um, you see it kind of makes all these little, these kind of gradients throughout the part, and certain parts are shiny and certain parts are darker than others. Um, and it just looks great. This material is probably my favorite thing I've ever bought. It is, you get your card, and you slide your card in the front, and your RSA key goes in the back. Um, if you've never seen these before, you have no idea what this is, but for those of you who, um, who have, you know, this stuff is great. Um, so a link to the, the model in the description. Now, it's just a free model I found in my Fingerverse or my manufacturer or something, but I'll put it in the description. Just in case uh, you could benefit from this sort of thing. Uh, when I wore this to work, uh, I think I had like eight people say like, oh, I would love one of those. Um, so I printed some more. <laughs> um, people actually said they would buy them. I think I'm just gonna make some, make some for free, and then uh, eventually maybe I'll sell them. A lot of people want them. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about this material. So this material is um, Matter Hacker's Gold Regular PLA. Um, I did buy their Pro PLA as well, but I haven't tried it yet. Um, but this stuff also is really nice. The gold finish is great, um, and just naturally with the. the, the geometry of the part, it still does kind of have those kind of different um, gradient patterns along it. Um, the color is really nice. It definitely has a nice gold texture. I printed a few of the parts of this. Um, what's printing over there in the printer now is the second half of this. This is the second time I've printed one of these, um, these kind of satisfying twists, as they're called. Um, first time I did it, I didn't know about base mode, so it took a lot longer. And the part got messed up. I have it at, I have it at work. I can show it to you. Um, sitting on my desk you now. <laughs> but uh, this came out much better. This is also, as I said, the, the gold uh, Matter Hackers regular PLA. Um, and it came out really good. I think this took an hour and 45 minutes. The other half said it's going to take about an hour and 45 minutes. And yeah. Um, oh, I printed another part in that material. This. So you might be wondering what this is. Um, and. I'm probably gonna print another one of these because it got a little messed up. Um, I printed it with like three other parts. I printed it in like Mickey Mouse cookie cutter, and then I think it went alongside um, whoop, one of these um, badge holders. Um, but somehow it got messed up, um, so I'm gonna print it by itself. It's a little beefier. Um, but why? The reason why this is special is because with this kind of comes an announcement. Uh, this is a piece for the uh, CR10. 3D printer. So right now I have a Flash Forge Creative Pro, but I, in the mail, um, coming to me, I have a, a Creality CR10 3D printer. Uh, so it's a $500 or sub $500 3D printer. Um, you can find them online for like $410. I bought mine from uh, Tiny Machines 3D, um, and it's more expensive for them. I think it costs $550 versus $410. From Gearbest, um, although Gearbest, that that's when it's on sale. It's not really the price these four fifty, but um, five hundred and fifty from Tiny Machine. But the idea is that this company is U.S. based, so Creality is a Chinese company. And if you want to get it through them, I don't know if the shipping is included, but you have to deal with the whole importing aspect, and it can take a long time. Whereas Tiny Machines Three is already, already has the stuff set up, and they order them in batches, so they just get them and then they distribute them. The other part of that is that they they are a U.S. resource for you to have um, some kind of support inside your own country, um, or at least on your side of the planet. Um, you don't want to be trying to contact Creality across the world. I don't one you know you never know how good their English might be. I mean this is generalizing, but if, if you know if they're a Chinese company, you don't know how good their support's going to be all the way to the U.S. You don't know if you're going to have um, English speaking representatives that can help you out. I have no idea, but I've heard that the support can be an issue, and I've heard that importing it from Gearbest can be an issue. So I just decided to spend an extra hundred dollars and get that kind of almost guarantee um, that I'm not gonna have to deal with that. The other part of it is that they actually do test the machines before they, they ship them to you. And I've heard that they've had, you know, people say that they're, they're very good support in terms of if you've got issues, they will send you parts for free if it's their fault or they deal with all that stuff so it's a lot of headaches i didn't want to i didn't want to get into so yeah super exciting i'm gonna have it and, um 
I'm gonna have it in a few days. I'm not gonna have a video for it probably until two weeks. So be excited for that. Um, that printer prints 12 by 12 by 16. This thing prints six by six by nine. So it's almost double in every dimension. Um, so it's a much bigger print volume. Um, and the last model I wanna show you is um, before this video goes up, I uploaded a time-lapse part of the Thorn gun um, from Destiny. And I put a picture of it in there, but I didn't actually show it in part in detail. I'm gonna make an assembly video, so that, that's gonna be where I show everything on it. But I just wanted to show the whole whole model here. So this this thing is, you know, what they consider full scale. Um, and it came out really good. So I think almost everything is printed in Hatchbox PLA, um, except for these uh, silvery parts, which is Maker Geeks, um, Dragon's Metallic PLA, and yeah, so it's a really cool model. Uh, it does have this trigger mechanism, um, mechanism. Um, it, there is a slot to mount a, um, like a spring or probably you know, a rubber band or something inside, so that this is actually spring loaded. Um, Printed these in the wood fill because it's a handle, and I figured it'd be cool to have the wood. Um, you know, hatch, so this is Hatchbox wood, Hatchbox blue, Hatchbox black, Hatchbox blue. And the cool part is that this um, this uh, barrel actually comes out. It's actually a little like, bullet inside, and it swivels back in there. And just gets tucked in, and there's still some finishing work to do. Um, it's, it's you know I kind of did enough just to pack it together. But there are some pieces that need to be shaved off still. Um, I don't think I'm going to paint it, but I just want to finish it to a certain extent and then probably glue it together. Um, it deserves that. <laughs> um, in total, I think this took 40 hours of printing on one machine. Um, and that's not including the failed builds. Um, I uploaded a video called Happy Accidents um, Failed 3D Prints. And that was the the, two, the part I used in that was I think it was either this one or this, but it failed on me three times in a row. In the video I only had show it failing twice. The third fail was much more pressing. So I printed all these parts overnight. Um, well, th those pieces that I showed, and on, on that third fail, what happened was that you know I, I set it before bed. I watched the first layers print. And I went to bed. And then while I was, you know, laying in bed, all of a sudden I noticed the power went off and the power came back on. And then I heard my printer, you know, doo -doo 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 -doo, whatever noise it makes. Um, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> so, I, you know, this luckily it was only like an hour into the print, um, off like the, you know, the eight to 10 hour build time for that part. Um, and so I walked in and the printer turned off, turned back on, and it was just, you know, it was right in the right position there was no option to restart the print. It was completely reset. So I had to kill it there, pry it off, start it again, and go back to bed. Um, and then I, you know, that one worked, so that was great. Um, <laughs> but those are those parts. Um, and, and that is the Thorn Gun. And there's going to be a video where I show you kind of each part individually and how it fits together. Um, that's it. So, anyways, um, hope you enjoyed this, this video, this kind of blog style thing. If you like this, this format, let me know. Uh, let me know what you want to see in the future in terms of 3D printed parts, um, reviews. I do have a lot of different uh, filament I've been trying, so I'm going to be reviewing it once I have enough kind of backlog of, of, um, of uh, test prints. So, you know, once I kind of you know, been able to try like uh, base modes and calibration parts, so maybe uh, bridging parts and just maybe high detail parts. Uh, then I feel like I can give it a review and talk about what went wrong during some prints, etc. So let me know what you want to see. Um, that's what I kind of have planned, just different time lapses, different parts, different materials. So like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and I'll see you all later. Bye.